Welcome to Flightest. I'm Josh, and this is Alex. Hey guys. And uh, you know what? We have never really talked about multi-rotor flight, have we? Yeah. Uh, specifically, just how to fly it. Straight yeah. bare bones. What you know? What do you need to know to begin flying what, a multi-rotor? What do the sticks do? Yeah. What? How do you? How do you control pitch, roll, yeah. uh, throttle, rudder, yaw, yeah. all that kind of stuff? And, and also, what are the key things that you want to really pay attention? What skills you want to build first before you take that plunge and start flying a pattern, right? Yeah. And before you get into uh, scratch building or building up big huge camera platforms don't even worry about cameras yeah. don't worry about FPV when you're first learning how to fly the first thing you want to get you learn how to do obviously is fly yeah yeah you want to learn to fly before you learn to take uh, video yes because if you can't what do they call it com com composure no what's it exposure? called exposure not exposure composition composition <laughs> if you can't fly you can't get composition exactly I don't know much about whole um, videography thing. so basically uh, you want to start out w small, small. Uh, the nano QX you probably heard us talk about it all the time mm -hmm. something like that something small that you can bash into the wall that's yeah. forgiving because you are going to crash well and you answer a lot of emails and a lot of people ask about you know what is the best first multi-rotor and they're expecting us to say the anycopter or something yeah. that we manufacture and actually the nano is the perfect start you cannot nano. kill the thing but there's tons of other ones yeah. out there too the SEMA the X1 is actually what I've yep. been what I learned on the Hubson? And I, I built my first multi-rotor just about a year ago it was about this yeah. time last year when I first started getting into multi-rotors and I learned a lot of lessons the hard way um, so basically we want to give you some quick yeah. tips on how to how to get into the hobby let's talk about our setup first okay so the biggest thing with multi-rotors that you need to, to keep in mind is orientation orientation uh, which way is which which way is the multi-rotor facing because uh, although they look just kind of like a bunch of props flying through the air they yeah. do have a front and a back and a left and right and that's one reason why a lot of people have different colored props in the front as compared to yes. the back or they'll have a unique color in the back if it's a tricopter yeah which so, depending like depending that. on the sunlight and the time of day a lot of times certain colored props are even harder to see than yeah. than black so we put this big arrow yeah so you can see exactly which way is front now on a tricopter it has the two front mm -hmm. the two motors are in the front and then the one is in the yeah. back now one of my favorite things is actually coloring the booms different that, that helps that too. helps out a lot yes. more than even the props because when they spin a lot of people will even put a big uh, a, a bar going across here and with like a ball on the front yes which helped with ping pong ball or something like that so those are all good tips once you get comfortable you, you learn how to keep your orientation even with no no colored props yeah. or anything like that um, so basically the first thing you want to do why don't we show them we can yeah. um, first thing you want to do is uh, learn how to hover I would recommend learning how to fly with uh, with no auto level no self-stabilization yeah. I kind of look at it as uh, learning how to drive a car if yeah. you can drive a stick shift car when somebody says hey you want to drive my Porsche you can yeah. say yeah sure I can drive stick you're not gonna have the same experience you're not gonna learn as quick either yeah yeah you want to make sure you're you have a ton of space yes. not many obstacles like trees uh, more importantly people or small mm -hmm. puppies okay. when you're learning to fly if there is a little bit of wind you want to face it into the wind that way it's blowing one direction sure sure and if you uh, if you are flying at a club or at a place where there are some people you need to make sure that everybody knows what you're doing yeah and be honest say that you know you're this is your first time flying um, because when these things go bad there's no glide slope it's not like a plane yeah if it falls like a rock wherever it is and a lot of times it could end up in a, in a hairy situation well and the best thing you also mentioned there is if you get in a hairy situation cut the throttle it's better to repair this if you try to save it it's only gonna get faster and worse so if you know that you're having trouble and you're two feet from the ground chop the throttle maybe you'll have a bent you know boom yes. or something like that but it's a lot better than trying to save it because anytime you're making corrections you're only making it worse if you don't have control over it exactly so basically I'll pop it up into a hover and now one of the tricks I've learned with a hover is really just punch it off the ground and then adjust throttle accordingly. Yeah, the air is really dirty down though. Exactly, and your, your landing gear can get hung up on grass or twigs or something yep. like that. So if you just pop it right up, it actually did get caught in the grass there. Yeah. So always keep it facing away. Now I'm constantly maintaining my orientation by using right stick, which is roll and pitch, and the left stick, which is throttle, and then rudder. And, and rudder's on your, you're flying mode two, so rudder is along exactly. with the Exactly, yeah, this is mode two, so, so keep yeah. that in mind. Um, now I have this set up with a camera on the bottom facing backwards, facing right at us, so that, that motor you see uh, is the tail motor, and that, the tail motor on a tricopter always has the rudder. Yeah, it doesn't use the torque of the motors, it actually is directional. Exactly. Yeah. So basically learn how to hold your position uh, by, by using roll, pitch, both sticks, yeah. Flying multi-rotors is, you, you always have to be correcting. The thing with planes is they have a glide, so they'll fly themselves to a certain extent. Yeah. Multi-rotors do not. As soon as you let, let go of the sticks, 
it's going to just keep drifting in that direction. And this, this is a little bit more of a harder path than, say, going out and buying a DJI Phantom, but some of these new uh, Phantoms and new technology out there, they kind of handicap you in a little bit of a way because what happens is the throttle no longer manipulates the RPM of your motor, it manipulates your altitude. So yes. you give higher throttle than the center, you go up, you give less, you go down. That's not really the way it always works out because what it does is you on those systems, when you push forward and you start flying forward, normally you have to compensate with throttle. It takes that away from you. So when you do jump into an actual tried and true multi-rotor, uh, it's a harder experience for you. So it's better to learn it, like you said, take off stability, mm -hmm. learn it from the very beginning. Uh, you're gonna learn a lot quicker and be able to step up a lot faster. Yeah, and that being said, every, every action that you do, so say you give it a little bit of right, it's gonna keep going right until you correct for it. Yeah. And then you bring it back. Um, so learning how to hover, and you'll see, I'll, I'll bring it into a nice steady hover here, and you can see on my right stick right now how, how little of corrections I'm doing. Yeah. It's very, very minimal, but you're constantly correcting. I always tell people to look at their thumb and cut the, the, the width of their thumb in half, and that's usually about the movement that you have to make to make your corrections on most airplanes and multi-rotors. And one of the key things to keep in mind with multi-rotors is rudder. I mean, yeah. you really need to learn how to use your rudder and, and pitch and roll all at the yeah. same time. Um, and it, it, it helps because it translates into planes too. I, oh, I learned yeah. that once I learned how to fly multi-rotor, I started flying planes completely differently. I use yeah. my rudder a lot more. Um, so that being said, yeah, there's no bank and yank. I'm still hovering here. You want to keep it facing away from you at all times. Yeah. I'd say the first, you know, 50 flights that you do, yeah. I'd keep it facing away from you the whole time. Now that's not to say you have to just hover the whole time. You can still take it. <laughs> look at the arrow. <laughs> <laughs> you can take it way down the line there, and and then just back it right back up, right yeah. towards you. And that's probably one of the first movements you want to make is your pitch movement going forward and backwards while keeping mm -hmm. it on the same line. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you definitely want to go forward and backwards first before you you start rolling left and right. Yeah. Because one of the things when you roll left and right. You're 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 not facing yourself anymore. Yeah, your your orientation you're sideways. Is so you need to give it a little rudder, and now I'm facing back towards us again. All right, there's a key training trick that was used all the way back when helicopters first came to be with RC and started becoming popular, and that was called walking the dog. What walking the dog would actually teach you would be to how to use your pitch to go forward, but then you'd use your rudder to yaw and then go a different direction and use it again. By doing that, you're going to also have to make corrections with your ailerons, and that's going to keep you uh, keep you in track. So you're actually learning the principles of how to use your rudder and how much rudder to use, how much aileron to use, and how much pitch to use when turning. The only thing that's not changing is the orientation of it to you. Nose in flying can be very difficult. When you're flying an airplane that's coming in, it's following a trajectory. Because it's not following a trajectory and just hovering in front of you, it's very easy for your thumbs to get messed up. And when that happens, you can run into trouble really quickly. Just remember, when it's nose in, if you want to go away from it, you got to actually pull back not forward one good trick that I've that I learned and this is this is one of the ways I learned how to fly um, is you can literally fly anywhere once you get comfortable with rudder um, you can fly anywhere you want just always keep the nose facing away yeah so I'll step out and I'll show you uh, basically you can fly around yourself even you just got to keep working that rudder so yeah. you always keep it facing away so I'll step over here yeah. and it, just fly circles around yourself but you want to keep yeah. the nose facing away now what this is going to teach you is it's going to teach you how to use your rudder in correlation with your bank, which is your ailerons, and your pitch. Because you're using your pitch to keep the distance from you, you're using the rudder to make sure that you're keeping the tail pointed towards you, and you're using your bank um, or your roll to, uh, to move it left and right. Now once you're comfortable with walking the dog and then also flying circles around yourself tail end, another technique you want to use before you go to a full committed pattern is to do almost like an S-turn. And what you're going to want to do is, so you don't uh, you avoid that full nose and experience, you want to get used to that. You're going to fly down to your left, and then you're going to do simply one turn. And instead of bringing it back at yourself, you're going to bring it across from yourself. That way your orientation always has a trajectory. It always has a little bit of standoffness, so it's easier to orientate yourself to the multi-rotor. It's going to be a lot easier to do that and get used to the mixing your aileron and your rudder together than if you're bringing it nose in and trying to hover. And speaking of hover, it's a lot easier to actually get forward momentum and fly in a, uh, in a pattern than it is to maintain a hover. You're having the plane follow a trajectory, following a line on the ground is a lot easier than hovering because with hovering you got to constantly maintain all of your axes and pitch, roll, and yaw, and throttle of course. When you're actually following in a pattern going straight down, it's going to give you a little bit of relaxed time on your rudder and your bank and you're only going to do minor corrections and keep it on that pattern. So once you've mastered hovering, these next steps should be much easier for you.
So we ripped this uh, we, we ripped this air off because it wasn't working. It's a little bit too windy. But we're also um, we're past that point. We're on the pattern flying. Exactly. Yes. Uh, so basically, pattern flying. A lot of times, if you're flying at a club, they'll require you to fly in a pattern, which yeah. is uh, either right hand or left hand circle, um, which gets very difficult. A complete circle is probably one of the most challenging things when at you're first flying it's a multi yes. Yeah. Um, you just kind of freak out or you lose orientation, and yeah. it, it, you're going to crash. So just get over that right now. Well, and there's a good tip too uh, that you mentioned earlier. When you're flying a pattern and everything. You're, mm -hmm. you're following trajectory. Or just doing coordinated turns in general. Yeah. If you yeah. if you want to do some coordinated turns, uh, a key trick that we learned is is using both sticks in parallel. So give it some right roll and some right rudder at the same yeah. time to whip the tail around, and it'll bring your bring your nose around. Kind of similar to an airplane. Almost. Yeah, there's, there's no such thing as bank and yank. You have to use rudder if you want to turn a multi rudder. Exactly. There's just physically no way to do it. Exactly. Unless you use rudder. Exactly. So why don't you take it off and, okay. and do a couple circles. Um, and one of the tips that I learned too is um, always always keep flying the craft. Don't just let off the controls and let it coast. Never take your you always want to be giving it input and telling it what to do. I find that I the most times that I use or I lose orientation is when I, I let go and try to coast because then I lose orientation. Um, but yeah, it's just a it's just a good tip. How's it feel, Josh? Feels awesome. You haven't flown this one before, have you? No. Uh, and this is our electro hub, by the way, and yeah. it's uh, it's a great platform if you're looking to build your first multi rotor. Um, it has built-in power distribution. It's a real basic concept, but uh, it works really, really well, and it's nice and light too. Um, it's very similar to our old anycopter. But basically, there's I, I think there's three main learning curves that you'll have to get past when you're getting into multi rotors. Uh, the first of which being is uh, learning how to fly, obviously. And like like we said earlier, get something small, get something that can take a beating, a Nano QX. You can crash that thing hundreds of times, and it's not going to do anything to it. Um, and then after that, you need to learn how to build one, how to what to solder to what, and where to plug in stuff, and how to work a or what kind of control board to get, and all that stuff. And then once you get that done you have it built then you need to learn how to tune it um, which is a whole nother learning curve um, so the nice thing about getting a small multi-rotor up front is you have something to fly while you're figuring all that stuff out uh, it's a little your, confidence booster when your friends get into it too then you can give something that you can hand to them and have them fly and yeah. experience the fun too because with a nano qx you don't really have to worry about it breaking too much it's a really solid durable platform and this is really stable flying pretty good yeah look at that and again, we, we recommend learning without uh, any auto stable, uh, learn in complete manual. And then from there, if you want to get into GPS yeah. and, and auto level, you can. Um, but that way you can fly anything yeah. and you actually understand what the craft is doing when, you, when you're giving it input. Always be aware where people are and always be willing to chop the throttle and sacrifice yes. your ship. This isn't like a foam airplane where you have one prop. You have three, four, sometimes up to eight motors on this. It can cause a lot of damage. You can change direction very quickly. Yes. So if at any time- It can go south of really Really quick exactly we don't want to scare you but we do want to keep people safe we want people mm -hmm. to have a good experience one of the best things i love is if you're learning to fly multi-rotors and you're in a situation like this it's great to have a field that you can bail out on and keep in mind these aren't these aren't these tips that we've been going over yeah. this isn't something that you do all of them in one day yeah this is something that i've been doing over the past year and like i said i've been learning i've been learning how to fly for over a year and yeah. keep in mind also that i've had the privilege and the blessing to work at flight tests so you tend to exceed a little bit faster than you average do it a lot so if you're crashing and you're and you're still having trouble don't get to discouraged because yep. it's it's a learning process and none of this takes away the power of a good simulator as well too um, yes. real life because you have the nerves definitely is different than simulators but how about if we just recap actually yeah you want to start off uh, pop it up off the ground and learn yeah. how to hover hover is good hover as many batteries as you can I'd say yeah. 20 30 40 spend 50 the batteries spend a couple days hover a couple batteries take a break hover a couple batteries you'll learn so much quicker once you're comfortable with that it's time to walk the dog staying behind it but turning it changing angles following it and literally walking it up and down a pattern yes. you're gonna learn how to use your aileron your rudder and mm -hmm. after a while it may turn into jogging with the dog and afterwards your, your cool tail and circle thing i never knew that but that's a very powerful trick yeah because you only have to make one turn basically you fly away you're facing away from yourself you make one turn and you only have to fly towards yourself for a little bit and then you pass yourself and then you're and then you're facing away from yourself again yep so then after that you want to learn how to fly pattern and this is when you're going to crash <laughs> that's <laughs> crash, what that's what happened to happen. me anyways um basically learn how to go in a, in a, in a complete uh, circle the biggest thing is learning how to commit 
yeah. to go to keep it coming around, keep it coming around, and then you'll finish your first circle. Use both both yep. thumbs parallel on the rudder and the roll. Yep. It help you do a nice coordinated turn. Again, this is this is over a long period of time. Yep. These are big steps to go from one to the other. So take your time. Don't hesitate. Wait until you're extremely comfortable. Yep. I know. I remember when I personally when I first started flying, being very nervous, yeah. not knowing what's going to happen, and that's okay. You'll get over it. But don't move on to the next step until you're extremely comfortable with the first step. And always put people first. Know yes. when to pull a throttle, sacrifice your ship for safety. Can't say, can't stress safety enough yeah. um, with these things. It can go it can go bad and, and uh, you know a foam plane doesn't do too much damage. A multi-rotor it'll go through a window. Yeah. You got to be very very careful especially when there's people around yeah. and just to keep yourself safe too. Absolutely. All right, we want to thank you guys for watching. We want to thank you for uh, supporting us through going to the store. Uh, the Anycopter Hub is going to be up on the store very, very soon. The Electro Hub. The Electro Hub. The new Anycopter. Yeah, yeah, the new Anycopter. The Electro Hub will be available in the store, um, possibly when you're watching us. Go to our store, check it out. We have a lot of also very durable uh, components now to go along with our multi-rotor line that will keep you from having to replace a lot of parts. Yeah, and also we want to thank you guys for making Flight Fest a reality. Yeah. Um, this is going to be an awesome event, not not only for us, but more importantly for you guys. This is your event. You yes. guys are the ones that made it happen, and we're really looking forward to meeting you guys there. So again, that's the July 24th to the 27th, uh, right here at Fury Field yes. in Malvern, Ohio. Uh, so we hope to see you there. We're going to be flying, we're going to be building, we're going to be having a good time yes. uh, all weekend long. So thanks again guys and we'll see you next time see you next time